absolutely love about him is, and I think I've brought this up in other podcasts too, but I love characters that are just like have like the goodness of heart, but aren't like the kind of characters that are just like, I'm doing the right thing because it's the right thing. Like he's still a super like conflicted character and really crappy things that have happened to him. But what's going on guys welcome back to another episode of the red essence games podcast i'm nick i'm armand and we are lifelong gamers as well as video game developers and in today's episode we're going to be talking about something pretty fun which is video game sidekicks so we'll probably be talking about not only the sidekicks themselves but what makes a good sidekick and if we were to kind of design one as game developers what we think you know, mm-hmm. maybe in terms of features, game mechanics, and stuff like that makes a sidekick fun to have around. Because sometimes they can yeah. be kind of annoying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to definitely point out what makes them annoying and yeah. things like that. So, <laughs> Yeah. But before we get into the topic, we wanted to tell you guys that our video game Traveler's Refrain is now on Steam available to wishlist. And we are actually going to be participating in Steam Next Fest from June 10th to the 17th. And we will have a public demo available. So if you guys hop in our Discord, which is down in the description below, we'll notify you guys exactly when that goes live, and you might be able to test it out a bit early as well. So um, hop in there. We're always like hanging out and just like talking games and stuff like that. We got all the devs in there too, so if you want to throw us some questions or just hang out and ask us anything or, you know, show us what you've been up to, what you've been playing, you know, definitely hop in there and let us know. Definitely. Cool. All right, so let's uh let's get into the topic which is video game sidekicks. So, I guess first off before we, you know, talk about specific characters, what do you think like just broad sense makes a good video game sidekick? Man, that's <laughs> a very interesting question, Nick. Um let's see. Definitely uh I mean, this is obvious, but like a not an annoying sidekick, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um I think I think a good sidekick is somebody that can complement the character really well. Yeah. So uh, not only just uplifts the character, like mm-hmm. the main character, at certain moments, but they also kind of are flawed in their own sense, mm-hmm. and you kind of realize throughout the story that maybe you, you kind of doubt them a little bit. You know, are sure. they good for you? Or are they not good for you? Um, and then you kind of realize that they're an invaluable asset and partner in the story. So I think that if they can kind of touch on that emotional aspect of things, I mm-hmm. think that makes a pretty good, you know, sidekick character. Yeah. And also somebody that you can maybe either control or utilize that's actually useful. Yeah. Because there are sidekicks in games that... Just kind of hang out. They just either hang out or they don't don't provide any useful utility. Yeah. And it's just like, what? what's the point? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the point in having that sidekick? So, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I think in a, in a video game in particular, if the sidekick can have like cool main, uh, uh cool mechanics, or yeah. maybe if you get to use them in some capacity, I think that's maybe what distinguishes them as more of the sidekick as opposed to the main character. Is like obviously they're not like the person you're using the whole time. Yeah. Um, but I think in terms of the types of characters we'll be talking about, we will be talking a little bit about like almost like solo sidekick characters, but then also like party members and like mm-hmm. JRPGs and stuff like that, which yeah. will be pretty cool. Cause there's always like these giant casts, especially mm-hmm. in the more modern JRPGs where it feels like the characters have time to be fleshed out with like cut scenes mm-hmm. and storytelling and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And then in terms of the rules we're setting for ourselves in this episode, I think a sidekick needs to be a character that's like physically tagging along with you, like running beside your character essentially in the game. Cause right. sometimes there's, there's games where it's like, you know, the, the character might just be kind of in cutscenes and frequent throughout, but right. I wouldn't consider that a sidekick. They have to like be with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right, cool. Let's maybe talk about some cool characters that we've liked in games in particular, and maybe like what, yeah, you know, we think, makes them a good character so i think uh the first one that that comes to mind in terms of just like you know they're with you the whole time and they're like an important part of the game is uh the characters in final fantasy 15 right and now obviously like all i won't want to say all but most jrpgs have a pretty solid group of members that follow you around but the bros in final fantasy 15 Mm -hmm. are your are your boys you know what i mean like did you feel connected to them? I did, especially by the end of the game. I felt yeah. like, oh man, these are like my homies. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, I, I liked that 
that they all have their distinct personalities. Right. I, I will say that in terms of characters in general, none of them are like necessarily my favorite characters. Right. But like you said, I feel like they complement Noctis right, right. very well. They each right? do different things. Like one of them cooks and he's kind of quiet. Yeah. The other one's kind of like a burly, like, oh, yeah. I think that guy's like kind of like you. <laughs> Gladiolus. Gladiolus. Yeah. Like, oh, Gladiolus. Yeah. Gladiolus. Yeah. Yeah, so I think yeah they I agree I think they and Noctis yeah. is like kind of emo so like he right. needs that group of heroes mm-hmm. to like be at his side to be like no man we got this kind right. of thing right? right right which is which is kind of cool yeah and I think that's kind of a tropey thing in a lot of at least in a lot of Final Fantasy games but I don't know these characters in particular I liked that when you're running with them they have like little stories to tell you or they're they've been buds for like the longest time right so they'd be like oh remember when we were kids and we did right. blah 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 and it just makes me think of like our friend group you know like we yeah. always like talk crap on each other or, like you know mm-hmm. have a bunch of memories to to retell so right i yeah i think it, i think it's a good cast um in terms of game mechanics it's like oh, man i'm trying to think of how how that game i know they changed it with updates over time as well i didn't play any of the dlcs did you I, I actually played all of them, mm. and and it, that was actually really cool too in terms of just developing the characters. Did they expand on them from the main story? Big time. Yeah. S- uh, one of them, I'm not going to spoil it, is kind the of the camera like, guy, right? Uh, was he from that one? The uh, Prompto. Prompto. Yeah. 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 They had one for Prompto, Ignis, and Gladiolus, right. um, and one for Arden, which was kind of oh, okay. kind of interesting. They had that many DLCs. Yeah, dude, and wow. they were each like at least two hours long. So really, it was pretty cool. But yeah, it was it was nice to to kind of be able to hang out with the character a little bit more and have an expanded story. But one of them was kind of like a divergent from the main story without mm. spoiling too much. If you guys haven't played it before, let me know in the comments what you think about FF fifteen as a whole. But um, yeah, it was it was interested that they it was interesting that they kind of went all out, and there was a lot of stuff that it kind of felt like they it was supposed to be in the main game mm-hmm. story wise. And then they're like, Oh, we'll just kind of save it for the DLC. But I don't know. I didn't really mind it, but they, um, I forget like, could you couldn't control them really? Right. Like at least in the base um, game, I don't think so. Could you like issue commands to them. I forget how it worked. Or they uh, just kind of like, I think they just kind of attack messed about. Like they just did their own thing. I think you could give them new weapons at least mm. though, right? You could kind of you might upgrade right. them. Yeah. Like in a, or I think you upgrade their abilities, right? Maybe. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, it was so long ago. But yeah, I'd say in terms of like mechanics wise, they're probably like on the on the weaker side. Mm. Um, but yeah, do you have another game you wanted to? Um. Sure. I mean, I guess uh, one that comes off the top of my head is like Sonic, the Sonic franchise. Okay. <laughs> I know I talk about Sonic all the time, but it's Tales. just like it's just what I grew up with playing. Yeah. I don't really play Sonic games too much anymore, but mm-hmm. I did when I was growing up, and, yeah. and I kind of call back to those a lot. Um, I think that um, you know, in Sonic games, you've got especially in Sonic Heroes more so than Sonic Adventure mm. Two Battle, but. In Sonic Heroes, you literally play as three characters. Oh, so it's okay. like um, you travel in almost like this formation of three characters. That's um, not the one where Sonic like makes out with the lady, right? The I think human. that's the first one. I think that's the second one. Yeah, Sonic. Is... <laughs> Does that actually happen? I don't think so. I think he's like in love with her. No, I think Shadow's in love with her. Don't they like kiss or something? something I don't like think so, dude. <laughs> we need, We need to look this. We need to get to the bottom of this right now. Does Sonic kiss a human? A very human that is used as chaos to save Sonic and kissed the anthropomorphic hedgehog as she did. In which game is this? Look, bro. But they which, literally like make one out. Is, which one is this? <laughs> Sonic probably won't be smooching any more humans, Sega says. <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? Wait, uh, what? Uh, oh, 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog. 2006 Sonic yeah, this Hedgehog. one is like notoriously people hate on this one. I never yeah. played it, but I just know this thing where it's like he kissed some lady and people mm. were just like, what is going on, dude? All right, well, she's not a sidekick, so. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring it up. Okay, that's so a, anyway. so thing. I, I never, <laughs> never heard of that. So anyway. Uh yeah, so um we've got tails and we got knuckles, right? 
<laughs> Sonic make out with Bale so I'm go. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, then, who do you like better, Tails or Knuckles? I like uh, Knuckles, probably. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because, I don't know, just more He's badass. Just cool, yeah. Tails is like, um, <laughs> Sonic, my, my, my radar is jammed. But I will say, game mechanics-wise, Tails has a cooler mechanic with a little, like, flying yeah. tail then knuckles like think he kind of like crawls up walls with his yeah, but fist in or something adventure Two battle you can literally fly as knuckles so it's kind of like you can odd. yeah he he like glides he glides like that's kind of stupid yeah so i it's cool <laughs> for the mechanics of the game because i don't know it's a flying echidna so yeah i don't Wait, know can we look up with it what an echidna looks like because i literally like have actual echidna and uh tails is a fox right right a kid I don't even know how to spell this. E oh, Echidna. Yeah. He's going to look nothing like Knuckles. Right. Like, where are the giant white gloves, dude? Yeah. Look at his oh, face. Look. He's got... Look, he's got he kind of looks like a hedgehog. Mitts. He's got some mitts on him. Yeah, I guess. He does kind of look like a hedgehog. That's interesting. Yeah, here's a... <laughs> <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's recording the the screen, so oh, it is? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to see this. This is so funny. Oh, what? The what heck? if Knuckles the echidna actually looked like a, a real echidna? Yeah, yeah. Oh um, man, what a weird animal. Yeah, I think they've done some cool stuff with Knuckles. Um, mm -hmm. he's and they're all pretty useful. I mean, you know, Tails is like your gadget guy, yeah. and then Knuckles is kind of like your brute force kind of guy. So, and Sonic is just like that, you know. Happy go lucky, like yeah, let's go, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like an adventure. Yeah. Uh, to, you know. Are there the like cutscenes where it kind of like showcases the characters interacting and stuff in that game? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, I mean they do all kinds of stuff together. So, and um, in Sonic Heroes, they group the the they're not really the evil characters, but they're like the more bad characters. Mm. Uh, Shadow, R R Rouge, mm. and uh, E. E one two three or something like that. Was e it a GameCube game? Huh? Was that a GameCube? It Game was a GameCube game. Yeah, yeah, I remember the box cover. That was. I always yeah. wanted to play that one. I never got to. Yeah. Dude, honestly, my Sonic history is I played Sonic one, two, and three like on whatever it was, Sega Genesis mm -hmm. or whatever, because my cousin ha had it. Mm -hmm. Um. So I like. That's yeah, just the ones where you go in like the loops. Yeah, they're stuff. side scrollers. Side but scrollers, yeah. uh, Tails was, I think, in Sonic two, and I think Knuckles wasn't either in Sonic three or like. Dude, I those old Sega consoles were weird. It was like you'd buy the console and then there was like an extension you'd like put on top of it. And then there was like Sega C D. Maybe that's the one that Knuckles. That's kinda was. interesting. Let's let's actually look this up because I'm curious, because I know I played one of the 2D ones with Knuckles. Yeah. Uh when uh did Knuckles Here in Sonic? Yeah. When did he come out? Nineteen ninety five. Knuckles' Chaotix was released in North America in 1995 in Japan on April 21st, 1995, and in Europe. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. I didn't know he was part of Team Chaotix. Because there is a... Um, so if you scroll up, this team here, uh, Chaotix, they're uh -huh. in Sonic Heroes. Oh. Minus the guy in the middle. So I, di I didn't know that he was in Chaotix. But there i i'm almost unless i'm losing my mind like chat let me know but um th there was a i was i think you could play as him in in sonic 3 sonic 3 knuckles let's see sonic 3 and knuckles Are the screenshots the 14 zones in sonic 3 and... yeah from sonic 3 and oh here Sonic the Hedgehog and Knuckles. Hmm. I don't know. I, I didn't grow up with a Sega. I just like played, yeah, my cousins and my friends. But like, I just remember how bizarre all of this stuff was. Right. These like giant carts. And dude, have oh, you ever. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Have you ever played on a, <laughs> a Sega Genesis controller? No, I've never played Sega Bro, Genesis. Bro, it had like six buttons, almost like an arcade. Really? Yeah. It was. Yeah, I just need to. they probably I, should bring that back. No. No. You don't think controllers need more buttons? No. Why not? Because I hated, I hated using this thing, dude. Is it this? This thing, 
Oh, and then there was this one that had three buttons. Dude, these things, these were terrible to play with. I don't know. I might just be biased because I'm a um, Nintendo kid. This isn't even that bad. It was pretty bad, dude. It felt cheap to hold, too. Mm. The D-pad just felt wrong. (laughs) I don't know, man. Oh, there's no stick on it. No. No, this was before sticks, dude. Or at least, like, on normal consoles. But yeah, that was a huge tangent, but uh, there, there's a little uh, Sega history lesson yeah. from two people that didn't grow up with Segas, so, you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> you have any you want to talk about? Yeah, so I think that the next one I want to talk about, and I know you haven't played this franchise, is Jack and Daxter. Right. Dude, those games are awesome. And yeah. what was actually interesting is we've talked in previous podcasts about, like, silent protagonists, and what was interesting that they did with Jack and Daxter is in the first game, Jack was a silent protagonist. Mm. And he kind of just did, like, facial expressions. It was kind of... It was PS2, so it was the first time they could really do exaggerated expressions and cutscenes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um, Daxter was fully voiced, and he was kind of like... He talked for Jack. What is Daxter? What is he? He's I I forget what the name of the animal is, but he's a, a mouse. F- no, he's like a fantasy creature type in that world. Jackalope. No. <laughs> no, he's he's got like a they they have like a name for it in Jack wow. and Daxter. Okay. Um. <clears throat> everybody in the comments is probably screaming. Uh, what is Daxter? And he gets transformed into this thing. He's like a what he's the same the kind of being as Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Daxter is a what is it? Oh the uh oh bro, I need I need better vision. What animal is Daxter? He's turned Otzel. into Otzel, half otter, half weasel. Wow. During Jack and Daxter. That. Yeah. So he like was like Jack, like one of these like elf uh, kind of characters. Uh-huh. And then he gets turned into Daxter. Oh, but okay. he's like really loudmouth and chatty. He's kind of like the fun, silly sort of sidekick. But it'll be one of those things where like people ask Jack questions and then Daxter will be like, well, he Bob, let's do this or whatever. Oh, that reminds me of the mask from Mask of Semblance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he I don't was know if a any great. Of y'all heard of that game? He was a great yeah. sidekick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can talk about that one in, in yeah. a second. But um, yeah, dude. Uh, these games were amazing. And what was what was interesting? What I was getting to is Jack is silent protagonist in the first game, and then in the second game, we we're like, they were like, now let's just let him talk. Right. So in the second and third games, and whatever came after that, Jack uh, Jack also talks. So is he kind of like more reserved as opposed? to... Excuse me, as opposed to Daxter? Yeah, Jack is the more kind of like stoic, like hero right. character. And Daxter's like the silly, goofy, like right, right. fun kind of character. So it's a good compliment, com- complimentary sort of duo. Right. It, but what's cool about Daxter in terms of gameplay is like, it, I believe it's kind of like Banjo-Kazooie where mm. like Daxter's always on Jack's back. And like, oh, okay. he's not really a separate character. It's like when... Jack does a move like Daxter will do like a move mm. with him sort of thing. I see. Like an attack with him. Mm. So they feel very like connected, connected, which which is really cool. That's, That's one of those games I think you'd love, especially the first one, man. It's like a collect-a-thon, just fun, run around, find mm-hmm. stuff, and go on an adventure kind of yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Sounds that Sounds like franchise. Banjo-Kazooie to me. Yeah. I just, the character designs always really stood out to me. So I was like... I picked that yeah. over like Ratchet and Clank, for example. Right. You know, I wish a lot of these games could get remade in like a more modern feel, so that people can experience what we experienced, dude. Uh, Gameplay well, and story wise, they back. did. Um, they remade. Well, we've remastered Spyro. They remastered. Uh, uh, not Banjo Kazooie. Uh, what is it called? The one that's before Jack and Daxter. Crash. Crash oh, Bandicoot. Crash, yeah. Right. They had a fur, Crash is just a rage fest though. Fur K resolution. That's what oh, they called yeah. it because you could see all his fur. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I actually have the remaster. I played. I, I didn't get through it, but that game just triggers the hell out of me. I know it's really hard, dude. But yeah, Jack and Daxter. I think it's probably because it's more of an undertaking. It's a pretty meaty game with mm-hmm. a lot of different levels and stuff. Right. Are there any other sidekicks in the game, or is it just Daxter? Uh, from what I remember, it's just Daxter. They're just kind of like two buds that like hang on to each other um but yeah we brought up we brought up mask assemblance so we were kind of memeing but uh mask assemblance was our demo game before we started on traveler's refrain and basically we had a character called the boy who would wake up 
um, in this place, like not really knowing who he was or where he came from. And he finds this magical mask and the mask talks and the mask literally gets stuck to his face. So we thought that would be a cool way for the characters to interact. Because could you imagine like this thing that talks to you that's like constantly stuck to you? And not only talks to you, but talks to other people on your behalf. Yeah. With or without your consent. Yeah. So uh, that's it, another thing. We did give the main character a voice as well. So he yeah. does talk, but it's like the boy was a lot more reserved and the mask was a lot more like kind of like in your face, like yeah. no pun intended, just like. Very um, blunt. Blunt. More yeah. blunt and a little more abrasive. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were saying that the boy and the mask felt almost too similar mm. uh, in their personality. So mm. I think that's maybe one thing we could have worked on. Yeah. With those characters is making them feel very distinct. Yeah. Uh, characters. Because um, there was a lot of like bounced negativity between the two. Mm. But I also think it's because of the section of the game that we chose to demo. As yeah. Well. It was a point in the game where... The, the characters were starting to um, rub each other yeah, in, way. in ways that they didn't necessarily like get along at, at that point in time. Yeah, I think what that, that kind of just brings up another thing in, in terms of all of these games is like with a sidekick, you need adequate time to flesh them out in terms of their, right. their character arc and like what makes them different from the protagonist. Because nine times out of ten, if it is a sidekick, it's another hero, right? right. So... You right. kind of have to make them two different types of heroes. Yeah. I think also what makes si uh, sidekicks interesting is when you first bring them on board, it's mm. like you're not fully on board with each other. Yeah. And I think that like friction creates a good basis for like a story because sure. I think secretly everybody wants the characters to like be friends with each other, mm. right? So um they're like kind of constantly waiting for that moment where they like will yeah. bond and like become friends it's like in all those like uh you know i don't want to call them generic but you know like tv shows where it's like there's the romance you know the character likes each other but it's right. like one will have a boyfriend and then you know yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they can never like get together until right. like season five or whatever right, right, right so it's that same kind of like itch you want yeah. them to to get along one of my favorite things in in shows is yeah when it's like two like guys that are mm. you know they just they have that like connection but mm -hmm. they um like one example would be uh vikings valhalla oh, i haven't um, seen that you haven't seen that yet no. but um yeah so the the two main like male characters mm -hmm. they're both just like i don't want to say like bros but they're kind of like yeah. very masculine and mm -hmm. they're both uh very um virtuous not virtuous like but strong willed strong willed and yeah. like they're strong characters yeah, yeah yeah and they come from very different backgrounds but they mm. both have this like kind of mutual respect for each other mm. um and then when they meet each other they kind of like butt heads a bit but then they're like you're my bro yeah and it's yeah, like you know like yeah, they yeah. kind of like have that like connection yeah uh, and they kind of like have each other's back so i, I really like that yeah i think of things i think that's kind of what's difficult about writing characters in general, but it, it's important to make the characters feel real, right? Yeah, like, exactly. like they have problems and they're not just always getting along and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, the other one I wanted to bring up is we, we did introduce in our mask assemblance demo, that Bune character, which, mm -hmm. um, that just talking about game dev for a second, which yeah. was kind of like interesting for us to design was we, Armand and I did sit down and we had a discussion. We were like, should we let the him talk? Because we we were like, okay, the boy talks, the mask talks. Should we have our third character like have a voice as well? And we decided not to just because in terms of a super small studio, it, that's part of the thing with the writing process is like it can kind of spiral out of control because then you have to right. consider all these scenarios like, okay, well, what if a fourth character talks to all three of them? Then they're all going to need to respond right. in some capacity. So um, we left the mask being more of like a storytelling device mm -hmm. and then Bune as more of a gameplay device. So, yeah. yeah go but ahead. we also gave Bune some sounds that yeah. that it makes and, um, you know, brrr, brrr, yeah. you know, like kind of like... Like happy is, or sad yeah, or yeah, frustrated. So, yeah, exactly. So I think it was up to... It kind of gave a bit of cuteness, yeah. um, a bit of uh, something for the player to interpret. Yeah. You know, what's Bune's mood? Does yeah. Bune approve yeah. of this? <laughs> uh, like, you know, what's happening or not? So yeah, um, yeah, I think 
so it's always good but to... he was a he was a cool character um in terms of mechanics because we created this system where he would follow the character around and you could kind of like actually he would Attach auto him. he would auto uh target enemies that were close to him i think right yeah if you, you could hold, hold the stick, a trigger if you didn't hold the stick he would auto target that's right and then you could hold the trigger and he would like shoot at them like mm -hmm. almost like little missiles and then yeah like you said we had puzzles where you could detach Bune and he, there were certain puzzles that only he could solve. So he would like fly off, you'd control him and he would like do something like hit a switch or whatever. Right. But that, and that actually... also like, a, yeah, brings it into another point, which is like playing with your friend who could control the yeah. companion. Right. Yeah. And like that feeling of the other player doing something useful. Dude, that's, that's something that we wanted to do that so bad because yeah. there's not a lot of games that tackle this. And part of it is we learned it's because it's like freaking hard. hard to design oh, yeah. this. Yeah. But I mean, we've had instances where either we've wanted to play a story-based game together, like play with our wives or our other friends or whatever. Right. And I feel like a lot of times like these two-player games, like couch co-op games are mm -hmm. getting lost or they're just like, like party games or racing games, which are mm -hmm. fun. But I don't know, especially growing up, you kind of have a lot more time to just like have your friend come over and chip away at a story game. So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe in the future we'll tackle another a game that has a mechanic like that as well. Yeah. But um, and that remember when we were showcasing at PAX, um, that was people such a cool were thing like to see. loving that dude. Yeah, yeah. They would sit down and they'd look at it and be like, "Oh, two players. Yeah, yeah. come sit down. We can both play." Yeah, and um. That was just cool to watch because yeah. their friend wouldn't just be sitting there, standing there awkwardly watching them play. And the character was useful too. Like not only did he shoot, we gave him little abilities that mm -hmm. like were helped the main character. So yeah, that was. And there were there were mechanics. Yeah. Like with the character where you couldn't keep auto firing because the power of the bullets would get like low so you'd have to wait for the like the energy bar to oh you'd yeah. have to wait for like a cadence to fire to get That's the right. maximum damage yeah, yeah yeah that way you weren't like spamming, spamming. And, and, yeah. and whatnot so it was more methodical yeah so. yeah and then there's other games like um mario odyssey which that's I think that's my favorite Mario game of all time, dude. Yeah. And I'm like, I have a very, Mario is very close to my heart because it was the first game I ever played. But dude, Mario Odyssey was just like a magical experience. And I know that you can play Cappy as mm. a second player, but it's like, they call it like little brother mode oh. where it's like all he can, you, the, the other player can just throw Cappy. Like, oh. that's it. You can take Cappy and throw it as Mario. Well, you like can do that in the. controlling Mario and you can just throw the cap. Yeah. The other player can throw oh. the cap. Well, Mario can do that, like, if you're playing single player, right, right, you know, because right. he, like, sits on the people as well, and, like, you can turn into them or whatever. But can single play the first player control Cappy? Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. If he has a ally or a companion playing? Or only no, the no, I think it. only the companion Oh, can. I see. That's interesting. It's interesting, but it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like, it I can't ever... It gives the other player, like, a lot of purpose and timing if... That's something maybe me and my brother would be good at yeah. together. Um, with maybe something like that. I just feel like it might get... I don't know. I've never done it. It just sounds like it would get kind of boring like mm -hmm. after a little bit. And then we talked about, um, for example, this is kind of steering away from like companions, but like we talked about Kirby, for example. That's a good example of even though the other character isn't Kirby, mm -hmm. he still has a different set of moves that like can right. assist the main character. So. Right. But yeah, um, I guess maybe we could talk more about characters like Cappy because Cappy's kind of like a whatever. Like he he assists the story of Mario, but like not by a whole lot. My favorite Mario game is Super Mario Sunshine, mm -hmm. and now oh, that Flood. is that the name of the bottle? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. So that I just thought of is like that's right. Flood is kind of like a, a sidekick, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. He talks, he talks and and he kind of boosts you around and, and stuff. Dude, so. I love that game. Yeah, and people hate that one. Why? I don't know. Uh, people crap on that game all the time. Super Mario Sunshine, folks. What's what's, what's Dude, the problem? <laughs> I and I'll go out there and say this because I know people love uh, Galaxy, right? That's what it was called, the one yeah. after. I I liked Sunshine more, honestly. Yeah. I didn't play too much of Galaxy. Mm. I mean, it looked kind of cool. Honestly, I probably would have played it if I had more time at the moment. But yeah, I, Super Mario Sunshine is just it's I, a classic. I loved it, man. It was challenging. It had really cool levels. I it liked had... the the look of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was. And uh, yeah, I get a little bit seasick playing uh, Galaxy as yeah. well because he's like <laughs> running upside down. You're like, oh my god, where am I going? Yeah. 
Um, but uh, okay, let's talk about some some Zelda sidekicks because they're kind of similar ish to Cappy. I would say maybe they have more kind of dialogue and stuff like that. You'd like they they all are like coherent. Um, but that's something that's been obviously lost in the in the new Zelda games. Like I know there's more characters in the new games, but I kind of liked that Link had a little Sorry. buddy with him mm -hmm. the whole time. And I know people hate Navi and think Navi's annoying. And I guess that's we were going to talk about some annoying characters, mm -hmm. but what do you think of Navi, Navi? for example? Um <laughs> I have mixed feelings about Navi. Yeah. I think she's an interesting like she I think she's a cool character to mm -hmm. have, you know, she's kind of she's a fairy, right? She's yeah, yeah. kind of like got that like whimsicalness mm -hmm. to her and you know, she follows you around, but she also like babbles a bit, I think yeah. from time to time and and players are like just stop talking. I yeah. just want to play the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think in that perspective, she can be a little annoying at times, but I think she's an interesting integral character. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish they, I mean, this is N64 era, mm -hmm. right? So they couldn't really do much, but I kind of wish they gave Navi more of a role in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Yeah, it feels like when the important things happen, she's just kind of there. But like when Link is just running around, she's there a lot. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I think you really figure see the most you see of her is when you're about to fight Ganondorf and she's mm. like, Link, I, I I can't get close because of the dark energy. Mm. And then that's when you like feel even like more so connected to Navi because sure. you're like, she is hindered by this force. Yeah. And that's you cool. and then you feel like you need her by your side at that moment and mm -hmm. she can't be. So um I, I think that's an interesting thing yeah. there. But yeah, she Dude, my favorite one was Midna. Midna, yeah. hands down. That's actually besides like the new Zeldas, like that's my favorite Zelda game. Is uh, yeah. what's it called? Um, Twilight, Twilight, Twilight Princess. Princess. See, I need to replay Twilight Princess because I played it in pieces and I didn't. I don't think I got the the like the experience, experience. the oh. way I, it should have been played. I see. But I still really enjoyed it. But you but beat it, right? I did beat it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The last boss fight is incredible. My brother loves the last boss fight. I don't really remember how that goes. I played it a while. It's ago. like um, he's in his like boar form and he like charges you and then you, oh. you get on horseback and you're like on horseback fighting the the um the the boar uh, and then after that it's like a sword battle with Ganon oh, Ganondorf. He was just badass. And you guys like you know duking it out in this like circle. It's so sick. It felt like like uh. Not a sequel, but like a spiritual successor to Ocarina of Time, just yeah. in terms of the mood, right? Right. So I'm, oh man, I hope I know it's like every prod podcast. I feel like we bring up like, what will the next Zelda be like? But I hope it's like dark like that again. Yeah. Like I, I know Tears of the Kingdom was dark, but like I don't know. It's like there's a mood to the to mm -hmm. those other ones. Yeah. Um, but Minna was cool because she actually had a character arc like she was the, like the shadow princess essentially right the twilight she was the twilight princess right i think so yeah yeah and it was just cool that like she's this like cute little imp thing in mm -hmm. the in the normal world and that she yeah she talks for link obviously mm -hmm. um but, but she also has that like hand that yeah. comes out right and she could grab and like throw stuff it oh, was kind of badass so cool man yeah i love i love design. when they give the characters like impact uh, like they and have. like uh it, it's that was like a unique thing mm -hmm. at the time too right like the whole her whole look and her weird like uh shadow power thing that she had that was sick and then link could turn into a wolf which is kind of interesting <sighs> oh my too. God, i loved it <laughs> it was pretty sick everything about that especially at the time so we were what like tw like 13 years old or something like that are we 13 i think so maybe we were, we were a like older than that, maybe teenagers, fourteen or fifteen, yeah. But anyway, it was like the perfect time to be like, "Oh, dude, this is yeah, this is so sick," you know. Um, okay, so another like JRPG series that we both played that obviously the cast is like absolutely amazing. We talked about it before, but Persona Five, dude, mm. this there's the characters are so good in that game, I it's know. so fleshed out, and I know it's because there's like. 8 million lines of dialogue. Right. <laughs> but like, I, I love that each character kind of has their own arc and it really feels like they're different at the end from where they, where they started. So I don't know who are your, uh, who are your favorite characters? Um, yeah. So in persona five, I think my, probably my top two are, um, Morgana and Makoto. Mm. And I think they were just, 
I liked all the characters, but I thought mm-hmm. that they kind of were either the most badass or just kind of they were just cool in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And and I thought that they were very mature characters, which sure. I tend to prefer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, not that I don't like silly characters, but I yeah. I like how well, Morgana is pretty. I guess Morgana goes through those phases of like right. getting kind of like depressed and stuff yeah. like that, which is kind of interesting. I just can't wait till you beat Royal and mm. you like see more of Morgana because yeah. his character gets fleshed out quite a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to play it. I'm so good. I'm playing it on merciless mode right now, so. You're, have mercy. You're never gonna beat it. Yeah, it's never gonna be gonna it's gonna it. be a tough grind, I I think. Oh my god. Can you change the difficulty? I don't know. Maybe. I think you might be able to. Um, <sighs> yeah, it should be interesting. My favorites are Ryuji and On. I like Ryuji because he's like the the like buddy character, yeah. you know. He just he's reminds a, me of my friends growing up, right. you know, like kind of like happy go going lucky against kinda. the grain. I wouldn't say he's happy go lucky. He's, he's a kind of. What I liked about Ryuji is he's very against the grain. Yeah. So like. He can be kind of annoying at times, mm-hmm. I feel like, but at he's the end of the day, he's still like your bud, though. Well, he's your bud, but he also like he just does not like sit there and take a beating. Like, yeah, yeah. he just like sticks up for himself. He sticks up for you. He sticks up for his friends, mm-hmm. and he doesn't care that he is this outcast character. Yeah, he yeah, just yeah. he just does what he thinks is right. Yeah, and I think that's what makes him a really interesting sidekick. Yeah, because a lot of people are like afraid to to go against the grain, but he's literally like actively trying to get expelled almost yeah. right? from from the school, and and you're kind of helping him out. So I, I think that he what he stands for is is an interesting character. I agree, and I think um I like An's progression as well because they kind of portray her at the beginning as just like oh she's the cute blonde girl, but then like you kind of see this deepness to her. Like as the story progresses, right. and I just, yeah, and I played this game a little while ago, but I just remember by the end feeling like, oh wow, she's a lot more than on the surface, and I think that also makes an interesting character when they're kind of showing you in the character design one way, but then you're like, there's a lot more to this to this person, just mm-hmm. like in real life too. Like this mm-hmm. has happened many times to me, where it's like, oh, this person's a lot cooler than I originally thought they were. Right. So. I just love in that game that you really feel like this connection to to all these characters and um it yeah it just it it feels like I remember beating the game and feeling like I I missed them. You know I'm like oh man I'm not going to get to hang out with yeah, these yeah. people anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's weird. You spend so much time like with them yeah. in the game that when it ends. It's... I'd say more so than literally any other video game I've ever played really? because yeah I mean I, can you think of any other game where you feel that connected to the cast i guess uh i don't know <laughs> like you're literally doing like you're like i say sea of stars is a good candidate yeah but they don't i don't know it's, it's not like, as many characters but... i think it's maybe because you're doing kind of like real life things with these people too mm-hmm. and it re- it really reminded me i know it's like more like the japanese school experience but right. it reminded me of like going on summer vacation you know right. like going to the beach like making going friends. shopping yeah making friends right. th- that kind of experience that i felt really attached to mm-hmm. so i agree um yeah that i i love that cast so i do want to bring up my my literal all-time favorite uh sidekick character yeah. which is emil from the okay. first near and uh what's so interesting you, you about still emil? haven't played that one yet right you just played near automata played near automata yeah oh my god dude i should i think it's on ps4 right i should let you borrow i should let you borrow that because that's also not a super duper long game oh my god dude emil is so good i don't want to spoil it because his character is like he's a tragic character let's Mm. just put it this way and um, anybody that's played the game will know exactly what i'm talking about but what i absolutely love about him is and I think I've brought this up in other podcasts too, but I love characters that are just like have like the goodness of heart, but aren't like the kind of characters that are just like, I'm doing the right thing because it's the right thing. Like he's still a super like conflicted character and really crappy things that have happened to him, but he can always see the bright side of things. Whereas Isn't he like a ball, dude, you gotta, you gotta play the game, man. I, you don't understand. He's a ball. He's not. He's not just a ball. Mm. He's a. 
I mean, do you want me to like just no, no, no. say don't a little spoil. piece? No, no, no. Don't okay, spoil. Okay, I'm not gonna spoil it then because you're gonna like see the the tran- transition of his character, and you're gonna be like, "This is so messed up, but so freaking amazing." Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, they wrote Emil's lines very, very specifically, and that's what I love about that game in particular as well. Is like, I love games where it's like. Okay, we have a set amount of lines. We're going to make sure that every freaking word is important to developing this character. And it's not one of those characters where every every line he says is like a quote. No, 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 no. It's, like the wind through the trees no, no, at night. No, no, no. It's not that. You it's like. That like <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> He's memeing me right now. Yeah. You'll, You'll find, find out our soon our own game. in Traveler's Refrain. Yeah. Go on. But um no it's it's not it's not that it's not like he's super introspective even or anything like that it's just that <laughs> What's so fun? the wind through the trees <laughs> that's not even a quote it's a riddle yeah <laughs> oh my god people say. are probably like what the hell are these guys yeah. talking about what are these guys on but dude uh what was i gonna say it's it's not like he's even introspective or just like says random quotes it's Mm -hmm. he says what he's actually feeling on unabashedly Mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know how a lot of people feel like very reserved about how they express themselves i guess let's put it that way he's very blunt about how he feels Mm -hmm. but it comes from a place of innocence not from a place of like i'm being i'm being an ass or something like that you know what i mean and he's a he's a that's interesting he's a boy essentially too so that's also what makes him interesting it's like it's that boyhood kind of you're just going to say what you're going to say you're going to feel what you want to feel you have really strong emotions one way or another if something messed up happens in front of you you're going to act on it immediately without really thinking through it because you haven't matured yet but then at the end something happens i'm not going to spoil it but it, he, you do see that moment of clarity for him, and he like knows what he needs to do. Mm. It's like every single thing that happens that freaking character is just sad, mm-hmm. but it's amazing. It's it's so good, dude. And and in terms of complimenting um, the protagonist, which I I still don't know if his name is actually supposed to be Nier. That's what I always name him. But um. Yeah, Nier is very like kind of emo and like, uh, you know, oh, I just need to in the one game he's trying to find his daughter and the other game he's trying to find his sister. But it's like the oh, I'm on a mission. Don't bother me kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And and Emil kind of gets on his nerves because an Emil is so like, like, oh, I want to tag along kind of right, thing. Right. He's like, oh, I don't want to bother with you. You're just going to get in my way sort of thing. But then you start to see like how much the main character cares about Emil mm. like, as the game progresses. Right. And and we were talking about Mask of Semblance 2 with like three characters or even FF15, mm. right? That you have to develop all these characters. Yeah. There's another character, Kaine. I'm sure you've seen her with the like skimpy outfit that um, she becomes the third. Well, and then there's the book as well, um, Grimmar Vice. So there's four characters running around by the end of the game Mm -hmm. and they're all so different and they're all having to interact with each other in very specific ways and you'll see how certain characters kind of gravitate towards other characters in the party Mm. i I don't want to spoil stuff but it's a game you absolutely have to play because especially knowing you and you've brought up multiple times that you love character development Mm -hmm. that that game has one of the best developments of characters I've ever seen in a in a story. So okay, yeah, Emil. We'll have to give that one a try. Emil's folks. amazing. Near, it's so good. near replicant. Yeah, near near replicant. Yeah, that's the one where you play as the brother, which I actually think his design is cooler than the than the old man near. Yeah, I mean those characters are very morose. I'd mm-hmm. say. Um, I'll I'll up I'll plus one you there, you okay. know, up, up you right, there. Uh, so I've got an even more morose set of characters. Okay. All right? So, um, yeah. So I, I know I've talked about this franchise plenty of times, but uh, mm-hmm. Star Fox. <laughs> all right, let's hear it. Yeah, Star Fox is you know a lot of darkness in that series. Yeah, you know, yeah. just craziness. Yeah. No, I'm Do a barrel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You got um, a frog. 
uh-huh. that comes around with yep. you. You've got uh, a a rabbit. Yep. An old rabbit who's yep. really grumpy. Is he old? Is he's he old. supposed to be old? He's old because he actually flew with your father. And your father mm. went missing mm. in the galaxy. And you don't know if he's dead or not. So they never told us if he was dead or not. Mm. He's presumed dead because... Um, in the last levels of the original Star Fox 64, mm-hmm. if you go the alternate path, mm-hmm. you hear his voice. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, dude. if you're going up the, um, as you're like shooting out of the, um, the last area when it's mm-hmm. blowing up, it's like, um, you've done well, my son, or something really? like that. Really? Yeah, it's really cool. I did not know that. And like, you don't know if it's like he's there or uh-huh. if it's like his spirit talking to, yeah, some, yeah. to um fox yeah, yeah so uh, i always thought that was a really sick moment but um yeah that's that's a little easter egg if you if you take the you have to go the back route i yeah that game always confused me as a kid i could never figure out how to i think i ended up getting yeah. what's his name andros i got to andros and then i couldn't figure out how to beat him mm. and then I, I believe that game just like sets you back to the beginning of the game yeah right? i think if you lose all your lives you're you have to start over from the whole from the beginning of the whole game, right? Yeah, but the, you could beat the whole game in in like an thirty hour minutes and a half. or something. Yeah, not thirty minutes, but maybe like an hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> I know, but if you if there was no like internet guides back then, right? Is like if no. you couldn't figure out what you were supposed to do, and yeah. I was like a dumb like six year old, you know. Mm-hmm. I I think you have to like shoot his eyes or something like that, right? Uh, you have to shoot bombs in his mouth. Well, uh, you have to shoot his hands. Uh-huh. Then you shoot his hands, and then you have to um. If you shoot his eyes, he gets irritated and he like does okay. something. But you have to shoot his hands, uh, and then eventually you just have to shoot his face. Yeah. But if you sh- you can shoot bombs in his mouth and he like eats them like a like a jalapeno and it's like, Pfft. and then you shoot. <laughs> so anyway, going back to uh, yeah, sidekick Slippy, you know, Slippy. He's <laughs> so so he's a deep character. Yeah. Man. So they made a an animation for Sonic, which or not Sonic for, for Fox, Fo- yeah, which was really cool. So if you're a big Star Fox fan, go check it out on YouTube. Wait, is it real or is it a fan? It's no, it's made by either Nintendo. It's like a it's oh, like a really, really well produced animation, oh. um, and it has to do with um, I believe it's Star Fox Assault, mm. which was a really goofy game where you mm. can kind of like get out of your R wing and run around. Is that on the Wii or something? Uh, I think it was on the Wii. Okay. Um, or on the Wii U or something. Yeah. I think it was on the Wii. But you could get out of the um, R-Wing and run yeah. around. And the the controls were kind of like not too tight. It was like kind of goofy, mm. like the, the hit, big hit boxes mm. and like clunkiness. But there was a really fun multiplayer feature in it. Um, but yeah, so they had this animation and they mm-hmm. kind of elaborated on the characters and whatnot. And what I like about the characters in the 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 sidekicks in Star Fox is they're mm. all different, mm. right? So you've got Slippy. Slippy's like like your tails, right? Yeah, He's yeah. got your um, uh, you know your diagnostics, your uh, your boss health bar. Mm-hmm. If Slippy goes down in a fight, you don't have the boss health bar. Oh, I didn't uh, even when you're, yeah, know that either. Yeah, and then if you if Falco goes down, he takes out a lot of the enemies that fly around the level. So he's kind of like your firepower. And then you've got Peppy. Peppy gives you like your tips on like. Dude, if these Peppy's are all down, mechanics that like maybe they were in the <laughs> manual, but like I didn't even know they existed. Yeah. Huh. So that's why you want to keep them alive because. Got it. I think without Peppy, without some of the characters, you can't enter into specific zones mm. because they're like, hey, I know a path to go. Like, follow me. Oh, got um, it. Okay. And stuff like that. So, and and Peppy's like, you know, use the brakes or, you yeah. know, do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. So, you know, without them, they kind of, um, and, and Peppy's like the old old man because he mm-hmm. he flew with your father. So he mm. knew your father. And he's he, he always tells you, oh, you're just like your father, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And he's kind of grumpy, but he's very useful, yeah. which I, I like about him. So, and he's kind of like that sense of reason um so if you watch the animation it's actually kind of it really shows a lot of their personality because they're like all like goofing off and playing video games on the ship and like (laughs) eating all these snacks and like yo clean this pigsty up you know (laughs) so (laughs) so i thought that was interesting um yeah it's i feel like that's a franchise that they i mean i guess they made one on wii u but they need to make a good new star fox game and i think it would be really cool like if they modernized it quite a lot i think yeah they really just need to 
you know, because the, the, the it, plot is so generic because they focus so yeah. much on the gameplay. I, I almost feel like if they did it like Star Fox 64, where it's almost more arcadey, but then they had like cutscenes in between, kind of like you're yeah. talking about, where you see them on the ship, they're talking, whatever. Oh, let's go to the next mission. Right. Like, I'm, I'm not even expecting like a 50 hour long game. Just like, I just like those shooter kind of games. Yeah. And it would be cool to play one that's more modernized. Right, right. Because putting your hands on Star Fox 64 nowadays is like, it's it's brutal. <laughs> it is. Um, and there's other installments in the franchise like Star Fox Adventures. Yeah. That game was awesome. But that one, um, that's the one on the dinosaur planet, right? Yeah. So yeah. that one, I don't know if you knew this. That one started off as a dinosaur game. Oh, really? Yeah. And then, and then uh, Nintendo was like, we're not doing this. And then they put <laughs> Star Fox in it. Wow, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. They like just totally changed what it was supposed to be. So that's why it's like so weird and doesn't yeah. feel like it's supposed to be Star Fox. But I feel like that's so what makes it so cool is it's so unique. Yeah, yeah. Like they just literally put Star Fox on this planet and he just you do all these puzzles and the combat was kind of cool for its time. That was another um, one that I, I remember I, I rented it from Blockbuster. Yeah. So I didn't like play a whole lot of it, but I remember playing it and liking yeah, yeah. it. I just bought it on uh, like a couple years ago on, on like a, e a eBay or oh, on nice. Amazon or something like that. Nice. So yeah, probably play that one at some point soon. Oh, those games are fun, man. All yeah. right, so to two more franchises we should probably cover. One I I gotta bring up Kingdom Hearts. My my boy uh my boys Donald and Goofy. Yeah, your like, favorites. It, dude, that Black they're the, you know it's silly, but at the yeah. same time like. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of character development with them, yeah. but they do bring a lot to the story in terms of either comic relief or just like important moments of the game, like them interacting with characters and kind of like lifting Sora up and stuff like that. And in terms of gameplay, like it's like FF15, like they kind of just fight alongside you and you can give them equipment and stuff mm -hmm. like in a traditional RPG. So they're pretty cool sidekick characters. And then another one that I would say is like kind of like top tier is is Atreus, like from God of War. From God of War, and I'm not gonna Armand hasn't played the Ragnarok yet, so I'm not gonna spoil like his character arc in that. But just in terms of God of War 2018, even I mean like he's the main character's son, and it's just yeah. so cool that he's running alongside you. And uh, from what I remember from that one, he has pretty limited. Yeah, he, I think you can shoot. You as, can shoot, and you can upgrade his arrows. That's right. Um, and they do. They can, can like, like stun, stun enemies, stun and, enemies stuff. and stuff. It's so it's sick. like they gave him a pretty cool mechanic. He can jump well. on enemies too, and like attack them with the that's bow, right, which was really sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just in terms of, I mean, that whole game is like the point of the game is the story. That you know? Atreus is like the pinnacle of companions. In my I know, opinion, right? Because like they just did such an amazing job with making him feel like a kid i know but a useful kid i know and you kind of go through that journey with um kratos and his son mm -hmm. and like now that we're both parents right yeah. we're kind of like i feel like i'd get too emotional playing that game now, now honestly yeah. like i've thought about it i'm like man thank god i played that before leon because yeah, yeah, if yeah. i booted that up now i'd be like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah, yeah so it's brutal dude it's, they did a really excellent job of i and i know um you know um, the what's the actor's name? Judge. I don't. Know. The Peter Christopher Ju Christopher Judge? Judge. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Christopher Judge. I mean, he, they they just brought the characters to life like crazy. Is yeah. just amazing to watch. Um. But yeah, definitely in my opinion, that is like the pinnacle of companion characters. And there. and I think maybe I've kind of brought up something similar in a different podcast. Like we did talk about in Persona, where it's like, yeah, it's very like real life events you do. But I do think that because they go into like this fantasy dungeon at night, mm -hmm. it, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a strong believer in like uh, folklore and myths and fairy tales and stuff in terms of being very relatable. And I think for me, a lot of times when you cast these characters in a fantastical setting, but have very normal human emotions, mm -hmm. it makes them feel more real because you're already suspending your, your, what is it suspending your disbelief because you're already like okay i'm in a fantasy world i'm already like i know i'm in la la land so it makes the characters then feel almost more believable whereas in a game like the last of us sometimes the character interactions because everything's so real you're like ah, would that person really do that thing in mm. real life because you're right. already thinking it's realistic i see even like in a 
TV show, like we were just talking about sitcoms, right? In like The Office, you're like, man, would they really have like waited this long to get mm. together? But right. it, it's because it already feels like real life. I see what you're saying. You know? Because the the world around them is believable. So you're very much more critical. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of analyzing. Whereas in a fantasy world, it's like you're not sure where the boundary is, right? Yeah. And that's why you can't criticize it as well because there's no boundary for what happens in this world when you – I mean you want to adhere to some semblance of – Realism. Realism call it. in terms of – character interaction yeah, right? but yeah, yeah. it's not so cut it's not as clear as a normal yeah you know. there's like more th more opportunities for the characters to do kind of wild things right but it's almost like exaggerations of emotions like i'm gonna this is a dumb example but i'm gonna go fight the dragon you know in, in a really powerful moment and it's like it, that feels like an expression of like it's everything's more metaphorical that mm -hmm. way and it, i feel like it becomes more personal and I don't know if this is just a personal taste thing because I know a lot of people don't like fantasy for whatever reason or sci-fi. They like just realism. But I've always been drawn to fantastical stories, I think, because of that reason where it's almost like in my mind I can I can just relate to these characters a lot more. They feel more real, right. you know? I agree. So, yeah, let us know in the, in the comments what you guys think about that as well because it's something I've been thinking about as we've been developing more and more of our own game. Yeah um tell us about your favorite companions yeah in the comments let us know you know what your favorites are um nick and i'll check them out yeah and uh let you know what we think about them yeah but yeah guys uh be sure to uh wishlist travelers refrain on steam and remember to hop on our discord because we'll let you know when the um demo is available to play as well but uh yeah we put these out every friday so please like and subscribe and uh until next time we will until next time talk to you guys later See ya. bye